What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Over 1100 comments. That's awesome guys. I appreciate y'all doing that. That was really fun. So I said whoever could get the closest. So me, Kelly, and Chase were kind of arguing. We had two people that were really close. We had uh, the actual horsepower it made. You saw on the, on the thumbnail. It made 1299.9 .9 horsepower. That's why we made the third pull. We were trying to crack the 1300, but it made a little bit less power. But we had two people. One person guessed 1300. The other person guessed 1299. And so me, Kelly, and Chase, we were kind of arguing back and forth. Well, who's closer? My argument was as well, 1299 encompasses 1299.1 all the way to 1299.9. And their argument was, well, 1300, it encompasses the 0.1. So that's closer to 1299. So anyway, we're giving away two t-shirts. So you two guys, I tagged y'all and I put y'all down as the winner winner in the last video. Sean Gray and G Lock. So y'all make sure y'all send me a message. It's got my contact information and we're gonna get your contact information and we're gonna send you guys a shirt. So I appreciate y'all joining in and check this video out guys. This is gonna be fun. I'm gonna show y'all the three pools again. I'm gonna show y'all the dyno numbers, but I'm also gonna show you the data log that we got from each one of those runs. See if we can learn anything from it. So one of the problems that we had, I mentioned it in the last video, battery went dead on my laptop. So when I went up there, I still had my no prep tune in it. I hadn't had an opportunity to load my good tune up in it yet. So my boost curve was gradual. It didn't even, generally when you're on the dyno, you want to go ahead and like max out your boost, whatever it's going to do. I would assume that would be the best thing. That's what I was planning to do. I was going to put it on like 40 pounds of dome pressure, but on all three of these runs, it was creeping up on a uh, boost. And that's why I was trying to hold it just a little bit longer. I thought it hit the rev limiter, but it did not hit the rev limiter. It actually lost crank signal. So that's a, a problem we're still uh, jumping into. Let me show you these data logs. Don't forget to go to turbojohnracing.com to grab yourself some merchandise. Hit that comment, like, and subscribe. I appreciate it, guys. Right, guys well here it goes the data log from the first run here and you see this is a very short run it was about two and three quarter second comes up like i said my laptop was dead so i did not have any control over boost ramp or boost curve but you can see coming out here the blue line is the actual boost the target is the yellow line and you can see over here to the left what it's actually doing boost wise uh Crack gas about right there. Uh, the green line is TPS for some reason. You know, it's, uh, it goes down before I actually let off, I think. But that may be a, an error with the sensor or the way the graph is doing. But that's where I let off. It made 29.6 pounds of boost. So that was the horsepower you saw on the first run. Okay, so this is the second pool. This is where it actually made the 1299.9. .9. I revved it out just a little bit further and it got up into a little bit higher boost. And so that's why it made a little bit more power. Uh, something else to point out, that back pressure number is inaccurate. I've been lazy and I have not replaced my back pressure gauge. So that's not accurate at all. Uh, this turbo is a GTR 102 which is a uh, GT55 based turbo from Forced Inductions. And on my little motor, this thing is about one to one, somewhere in the 40 to 45 pound range is where it kind of gets a little bit more back pressure. But you see we coming out here, 
Uh, air fuel ratio is pretty good, pretty safe. Not creating a ton way up there. Made a peak of 30.3 pounds of boost. And that was the 1299 on the actual horsepower. Now the torque was higher on the first curve and the RPM that it's reading, they did not put anything on my car. That is RPM of the actual rollers itself. I know the torque number was way high, 16 and 1700. I don't know how accurate that is or you know if it's if it's accurate at all, but that's what it was saying. So there goes the 1299 pool, uh, 30.3 pounds of boost. Okay, so here's the third and final run, the one where we were trying to break, not the motor or the transmission, but we were trying to break the 1300 horsepower range. You see this thing spooled up really fast, it come up quick again, and there again, as the it was adding dome pressure. If this thing, if I would have had the CO2 where I wanted it, it would have just been up here, this boost curve would have come right up, and it would either spun on the dyno or made some really good power. But this one, it made actually a little bit more boost, but then RPM was a little higher. And boom, right there is where it lost crank signal. And see, it goes to sinking. And so that is where the big backfire happened. And so that's a problem. I mean, that is a, a big deal. But it made 33.4 pounds of boost. That's right there, 32.8, and then it spiked up on the backfire. It goes into the crank sinking, and at this point, it is just done deal, and this is where the transmission starts getting fried. All right, well, there you have it. 1,299.9 horsepower at about 30 pounds of boost. It's a lot of power, guys. This is a little teeny motor, 364 cubic inches. I'm very happy. I wish I wouldn't have tore it up, but hopefully it's not broke too bad. Hopefully we'll be racing again this weekend. Don't forget to go to turbojohnracing.com to grab yourself a t-shirt or to pick yourself up a Lucky Lane flip coin. Thanks, guys. Later.